Let's do it. Yeah, planet Future Part 1. The CJ so good. MV. I currently have 213 pair of shoes. These are from the movie Back to the Future. And that movie Ooh. came out when I was born in 89. I honestly began collecting shoes um, once I graduated first high school. Um, so I oh, was able so to have a like job. Obviously, summer heaven. job is what it all started. It but it began because oh, wow. I was able Look. to um, have the things that I wanted. And obviously, no one needs 200 pair of shoes. So that's why um, I emphasize want. I wanted as many wow. shoes as I could have, and um, I was never able to do that until um, recently becoming a YouTuber. CJ, CJ so cool. I'm CJ so cool. Tell them what kind of cool kids. It's, it's your boy. CJ so cool. I'm back again with mm -hmm. another video. We're celebrating hitting mm -hmm. three million subscribers. That's right. Before CJ so cool, there was something. There was part one past. I, see that. I can very well Not say that there was many thing. years in a row that I could count the number of shoes I had. So I had to play basketball, cut the grass, go to school, go to church, all in these same shoes. And um, that stuck with me. I will never go through that. Basically, I never wear nah. the same shoes once um, in the same month, at least. So if there's 30 days in the month, I'm wearing 30 pair of shoes. I wore this shoe to a sneaker convention where I hosted the basketball okay. game. So basically, all lies law on me. And um, I That's could not I take a step too. without yeah. being asked, what are these? How much are these? And wow, yeah. those are beautiful. So a bunch. These, these got the most response. It's a bunch. These are Christian Louboutin red bottoms. They it's cost about $4,500. This is my house right here, man. This is the house I grew up in. I was hey, on the system at a very young age. I, I didn't know what that meant at the I time, but I was a foster kid. Maybe we're born. Anyways, Betty used to be the neighborhood foster mom, so when I got tired of living at my mom's house, my granny house, I ran away and moved here with Miss Betty. True really? story. My high school True. was across the street from the projects. Um, every lunch hour That's is where I would see adults school? jumping oh, yeah, games from the this. projects. Sometimes they had guns, Gary, weapons. Yeah, but this is the Gary Housing Authority, otherwise known okay. as the projects. Projects. You have to tell us we found all that. The project. Come on. The top of the leaf. The first time I saw a murder, it was right here. I saw a 13-year-old really? boy kill a grown man. I saw that, man. This is crazy. I honestly Are thought that at some point, How this would be a kid. A kid. I know a guy could kill, kill him. Way. Way. Probably the only kid a kid. That's come that on. Long. Really? But this is all of this that I have now. It all yeah, stays my dad. Being that kid that you're weird or you have nothing, everyone's better than you. And even though it's not your fault, all these things are true. Very much true. True, true, true. I was that kid and I knew that I deserved better. And I made sure I got it. Elementary, I graduated from this elementary school, but they changed it to an all boys academy. Anyway, man, this this is it, man. This is my elementary right here, bro. These are the projects that I had my fights in, man. These are the people that used to be basically uh, envious of us, me and my brothers, because we didn't really? live out here. I was always a standout kid or a class clown. If the class got too quiet, I made sure I livened it up. That was me. I know how I used to be when I was in school. But I want to know if uh, kids have changed since then, because I'm a lot older than a lot of kids. Um, my grandmother, she had uh, VHS recorded us or somehow back in the day, and I still remember seeing it. I sung almost the whole video. So every time I got caught on camcorder, I was just uh, a human jukebox. I was singing every right. early song I ever heard, and that just, it touched me to see it as an adult, to know that as a kid, I wasn't quiet or to myself. I was always outgoing and I wanted the attention. Baby, are you drunk? Have you had enough? I got like that. We are currently on Martin Luther King okay, right now. Yeah. This is one of the schools I graduated from. Oh, so this is the nearest school you graduated. You've seen the diplomas. I got two diplomas one from Roosevelt High School and one from the Gary Area Career Center. I was in high school, I was a senior. That's and, uh, high school? 
Escalade at the time. It was a 2007 Escalade pulled up to my school on rims, like 24 inch rims. And I'm looking at like, wow, look at that car. And this guy gets out, this African American sailor. I was never had no intentions on the military because I have a military background. Nobody in my family history was in the military. He has on this white uniform, white hat, white everything. And I'm just like, wow. What does this dude do? I know nothing about the military. And uh, he came straight to me. It was like it was meant. He came up to me. Really? Out of everybody on lunch hour, he came up to me. And I'm like, what do you do? How do I get that car? Tell me and I'm in it. It was only because of him. If I had missed school that day or if I had been in the bathroom, I would never have went to the military. I went to the military because I wanted to escalate on 24s. Specifically that. My future, I saw my future as wearing that outfit, pulling up to a school, making other kids feel how I felt when I saw him. Envious, you know, worship me, look at me and want what I want. That's how I went to the military. Well, first I had to go to boot camp, which was, it was different, very different. Being in a room with 88 men for months, I mean, that is very different than Great Lakes in Illinois. Almost two hours away from home. Not very far from home, I like most of the other guys, but I had never lived with that many men. My whole life had been around women. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, I had two sisters and only two brothers, so. This is the room me and all my brothers and sisters grew up in. My oldest sister, Shayna, oh, me, really? my little brother, Kenneth, my little sister, Mimi, and then my little brother, Jinx, which you all know him as, but his name is Anthony. All five of us slept in this one dead room. Guys. Wow. I went from being around a bunch of women to a bunch yeah. of men. And Taking mm -hmm. orders from me, as you know, I had no father. So I think I looked at all of those, uh, my my chiefs and my petty officers. I looked at them as father figures. And you guys um, space I think I submitted the way to them as okay. I wanted to my real father. And unlike the other eighty-seven men who probably did have fathers, I could see it in them the resentment and the you know my dad and the and I'm like, wow, why would you guys do this? You know, we all have a purpose. We're here for a reason. And I was the guy that listened to everything, so they put me on the pedestal, which enabled me to get selected by the presidential honor guard. I went to become a cook. So I went to the military after boot camp. Um, they yeah. switched everything around. Right, They're like, you're not going to be a cook. You're going to be in the presidential honor guard now. So I'm like, wow, this is, this is great news. Um, and that was my first time being in the newspaper, actually. Once I got selected for that, I went back home for a couple of days, and reporters came to my house, and they did a segment on me, and I was very ecstatic about that. What? And Get after point, I graduated please. the presidential honor guard, I, I, about your past. I love to join uh, my duties as a casket bearer. Uh, I love to talk to you. I love to talk to you. I buried higher dignitaries. I did the flag folding. I played the trumpet. Okay, the okay. And so he's a flat holder. He's a trumpet player. All right, all right. Two years. He talks a little bit more about Mr. Steve Jackson. Which is not what I wanted. Um, I had to what live on the ship. And it was the ship? smallest ship in the Navy. The, the, the smallest ship. Yeah. So me being 6'1", my whole life switched from being free, tall, and happy to ducking down and ducking making sure down. I don't bump my head on metal pipes and listening to people telling me to do this and that. And it wasn't cooking, which I originally signed up to do, and uh, I did not like it. I honestly regretted the Navy after the President John right. Navarro was right. over. After it I left the military, you, I received... Because I had vacation time. So I received like three months of checks after that. So for three months, I did nothing. Just have fun. And I went right back to Gary to live with my grandmother. Yeah. I might as well make a pit stop and go see my granny's crib. Just to show you guys Your where I really came crib. from. Huh? Yeah. And, uh, just having fun until the that. checks ran yeah. out. And that's when I woke wow. up. And then uh, I realized I was screwed. So I had to get a regular job working at Menards. Big Menards? I worked in the carpet section. Carpet I was a great salesman right. because all of the things that I got from the military and um, people loved me for it. So I thought that that would be my future forever. I'm going to work at Menards and become a manager one day. Sorry about that. I got fired. And then I went to college to become, a, well, I went to college for uh, criminal law. I wanted to be something in the criminal law. I wanted to be a lawyer or detective. I didn't know what, but I went to, uh, to college really? Purdue University. To pursue oh, dude, criminal justice. I got expelled from Purdue for having a gun in my dorm while I was in class. Boy. So I kept it in my dorm room and they found it. 
it was just a random room inspection and they saw a gun. And it, it was after the Columbine. So no matter what I said, it looked bad. They kicked me out and then after that, I realized I'm a failure. Well, at least I thought that. Yeah, For a long time, yeah. I didn't do anything good or positive. I just stayed at home with my grandma. And I was lost. And then I grew up and then I had a kid. That's when everything oh, changed. Geez. When I made it to Kamari, so this is where uh, the cliffhanger comes. That's the reason I'm in Gary today. I guess to it's going to be a cliffhanger. When I had my first and only child, Kamari, five years ago, that's when I changed as a man. At least, or as I wanted to be bothered, um, because up until that point, I was just having fun like any other teenager. Is it you know, to this? And parenting was the last thing on my list. But once I got that call that I had had a child, um, I signed the birth certificate, something my father never did for me. And um, from that day on, I began to do things that was never done for me. Not yet, there's a cliffhanger. It's just a cliffhanger part. Yeah, I can't really laugh with people, with, with the other kids. Download the live voice app to see the exclusive Q&A with CJ tomorrow night. Alright, so guys, I'll see you guys in the next time. Your boy's out.